right, and welcome back to my Astro Imaging Journey channel. Chapter 1. We're be, we will be getting an output from a script that will give us our sensor data that will be valuable in upcoming uh, uh, processes. First thing we're going to want to do, and now again, this is uh, based on the information provided by on the uh, Light Vortex Astronomy uh, tutorials written by Chiron and uh, so we're going to be following that pretty closely here. Uh, the first thing we want to do, I am running uh, DSLR based imaging so I want to come over here to the Format Explorer okay, and then come all the way down here to where it says RAW. Uh, previous versions of PixInsight it said DSLR RAW and it was up here because it is in alphabetical order it appears and then we're going to come down here and we're going to edit preferences and then we're going to select this pure raw okay because PixInsight when it's first installed it demosaics when it displays um, which can cause problems with some of the processes apparently and I and I and I'll agree with that because I did not know about this trick uh, the first few months and it was causing me some problems so uh, we just click this pure raw and then click OK. And that's pretty much it. So now the next thing we want to do, now that, uh, now again, this is, that was for DSLRs. If you're running, um, you know, CCD, narrowband, whatever the case may be, you, you, you should be fine. Uh, but for one shot color and DSLR, uh, I believe you'd need to, uh, Definitely for DSLR, I'm not sure about one shot color. You need to set that uh, that pure pure raw setting. Next, we're going to come up here. I've I've already opened up all my images uh, because we're not going to be able to reference files, so we're going to have to reference views. And so what we have here is two biases, two darks, and two flats. For the two darks. You need two different uh, exposure lengths. So, you, so in my case, I have 60 seconds and 300 seconds. Uh, those are the extremes that I run uh, in Chiron's uh, tutorial. He demonstrates using a one minute and a uh, 10 minute exposure um, for the darks. But I didn't see any reference, or at least I don't remember seeing any reference to the like the ISO and making sure other things match. Uh, clearly the the exposures are going to uh, differ between the flats and the darks and the darks and the bias and all that. But at least I've tried to maintain the ISOs on the files that I selected. Uh, so make sure you have two of each and with the dark you have two differing exposure lengths. In my case one minute and five minutes. Then we're going to come up here to script and then I believe it was under uh, instrumentation. Yes, basic CCD parameters. We're going to let that open up. And this is the views that we're going to select. As you can see, it's drop downs based on what's open. We can't select a file. so. For our flats, we're just going to select each flat in its own kind. We need to make sure our names are uh, different. Uh, you don't want to select the same file twice. And then our bias. Again, our names are different. And then our dark frames. And then our exposure. Now in previous versions in uh, Chiron's tutorial, it mentions that you have to, in, you have to update these um, manually. As you can see here, it auto-populated. I am running PixInsight 1.8.6. So it auto-populated with rounded up versions of these exposures. So I'm just going to leave them be. Uh, I'm not going to touch those, you know, uh, mathematically speaking, we should be rounding down, but in their infinite wisdom, 
they say round up, so we're going to leave it. Under camera param or camera properties, one shot color and DSLR, we need to check mark the CFA or color filter array. And then we have to put in input the data uh, for our sensor. Uh, usually the readout depth uh, is uh, going to be based on uh, I can't remember what it's based on right now, but as you can see in that little fly out there, uh, 16 for Canon EOS, and that's what I'm running. Uh, so that's what we're going to leave it at. Um, for the bits, uh, Canon RAW is 14 bit, so that's what we're going to leave. And for the ADU, that is based off of this. So if we were 16-bit, this would be 65,000 uh, and some odd change. For 14-bit, it's 16,000 and some change. So we're going to leave that lot the same as well. And then we don't touch the region of interest uh, setting. Now, Kyron does mention that you can go and take an overexposed flat. Um, so if you're taking flats, it might be a good idea uh, to go and do a 30 second flat. Overexpose that and then go in and find the uh, maximum value of that blown out because everything is going to be pure white and you're going to have maximum values and you'll be able to get, the, get that maximum value here. Um, now, how, you know, what program that you would get that through I'm not sure um, so I haven't done that so I'm not I, I can't speak to that right now and that's it now we just click the report and it popped up pretty quickly and since if this was a monochrome we would only have the single column but since I am running a DSLR We've got our red, green, blue channels, and then I uh, uh, believe this would be your luminance or brightness, uh, lightness channel. And what I do in this particular instance is I come, up, come down here and I use the Windows Snipping Tool. And I just take... and make a screenshot of it basically. Yep. And then I'll save that into my calibration library. So go over here. And I've done this previously, but I have some updated information. And so I'll just replace that file. We'll minimize that. Now these are going to be key because we're going to need this gain value, um, possibly the readout noise. Uh, you know, there, there's some, yeah, I think it's the readout noise and the gain value are the two that are we're going to need later on. Okay. Now for one shot color and the DSLRs, you'll notice each one has varying uh, variables here 0 0.141, 140, 139, 141. Uh, according to Chiron's uh, data, somebody asked the question when it's when one of these processes is you needs the vari the value, which one do we use? And according to Chiron in the comments, we use the maximum value, whatever that happens to be. Uh, usually your green channel is going to be uh, your highest value because DSLRs, you know, it's RGGB. Uh, so it's probably going to be more geared towards that. My camera has been astro modified with uh, visible plus H alpha filter and the anti-aliasing filter removed. Uh, so, you know, some things aren't going to follow conventional uh, wisdom in that regards.
So in this particular case, if I needed to put in the gain, I'd be put in 0 0.141. And if I needed the readout noise, I would be putting in the 2.134. And that's it. We've got the screenshot. We've got that. So we can hit quick. And then we can close out all of our images here. And that is it for this particular script. Uh, pretty quick, easy to use, gets us that data that frankly I was never able to find online anywhere until I found uh, Chiron's tutorial on how to, how to do this. And, uh, and it's great uh, that hopefully will help out with in uh, the processing here to get me better results uh, going forward in my processing. So with that, I want to say thank you for watching. If you're watching via the full-length video, stick around. If you're watching on the chapterized version, I hope you check out the next chapter. And as always, I appreciate each and every one of you. Please hit that like button, subscribe, ring that bell, clear skies.